Welcome back to DIY Golf Cart Garage. We're continuing working on this upgrade of Paw Paw's tree climber. And today, we're gonna to be changing out this uh, stock controller and this stock solenoid for a larger 650 amp all tracks controller. It is programmable. And we're going to put this heavy duty solenoid in. Before we get started putting this in, we've got to get our battery pack ready. And then for safety issues, always remember, take off all your jewelry and take at least uh, one battery cable off and always have eye protection. We want to see what we're doing. So in doing this, I'm going to take off one of the battery cables. Now that we're getting ready to take our solenoid and the controller off, we don't want to mix up everything. So we want to make sure we put everything back together right. Would always suggest, we'll start with the solenoid and a tie strap. Just tie strap the two red wires together so that we'll know when we put everything back together that these two red wires go together. Same way with the two small black wires. Okay, now we've got those two. Now up here we've got our controller. We can go ahead and take the main lead wire out. Take it loose. Now on the B plus, we've got the two large terminals, the B minus, large terminal and a small terminal, and the M minus is just the one large just so that we don't get anything confused. Once we take these apart, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt these back together, uh, the two large ones and these large and small. But I'm also, because of the orientation of the new controller, these lugs are in different places. So I'm gonna take my trusty mask and tape and pen and march each cable, B mi M minus, B minus, and B plus. So let's Okay, now we're going to get started taking off the solenoid. Solenoid, which is pretty simple. As long as it's only got two large terminals going, one side going to one, the other large terminal going to the other side. As long as you don't put those two large terminals together, it doesn't matter which side you put on. So we're just going to head and take these loose. I almost forgot, we got to take the 250 ohm resistor off. That will be needed later. Now for the small terminals and the diode. Okay, and now the negative side. Now we can take this thing loose. Okay, there's the other one. And now the controller. And that, my friends, is how you disassemble taking your controller and everything off of this plate. Next, we'll go back with a heavy duty controller. Now that we got the old one off, it's time to put the new one on. Now with this right here, you'll use the existing hardware that we had earlier, just these self-tapping bolts. They'll go right back in, except this time, we'll just mount it with two, one on each side, right in the center. And now that we got that mounted, Let's grab our solenoid and get it mounted to the top. Okay, now this new heavy duty solenoid, it mounts just a little bit different. It'll actually mount to the top of the controller 
with pre-mounted uh, mounting holes and it has brackets that actually mount to the controller and then to the sides of the solenoid where there's holes on each side with screws hold threads already there. So what we're going to do first is go ahead and mount the brackets using existing hardware to the controller. And by the way, this one will actually mount upside down. Now that we've got our brackets on, we'll take our solenoid, which usually on a lot of cars will mount this way, some mount this way. Well, since it's electrically activated and not fed by gravity, we're actually going to mount this one upside down in this direction. By doing this, it will allow us to have access to the hole here, which you can take this cover off and reprogram your controller. Now that we've got all four in, we can tighten them down. Okay, next, all the little small wires that hooked up to the last solenoid have all got ring terminals. So what I've got to do now is go get some female spades and we'll put these two wires together into one spade, these two into one, and plug them in to one or the other of these. At this point in time, it doesn't matter which one they go to. What's really going to determine that is because on this side is where I put our diode. And the diode has a stripe on it, and that stripe will have to go wherever I put this red. I'll show you that in just a moment. So far what I've done is taken the two red wires they went to the small post on the solenoid, put those together and put a female terminal on it. Now I've taken the two black wires that went to the small post, put those together and put a extension wire inside here because the wire was a little short and because we're moving way out and I need that extra distance. So since I have this, I can actually go ahead, plug these up, they just slide right on now the other side of this, what I've done is I've taken the diode, I've taken the ring terminals off, and put the female ends on it. So what I'll need to do is put it on, matching up both red and black to red and black. The ring on the diode goes towards the positive. We've already determined this red is the positive. So we'll just go ahead and slide it on. Now all I've got to do put my 250 ohm resistor going to go across the two large terminals and hook our cables back up to this then we'll be able to jump right over to the controller okay now then we can connect our large terminals up to the top this one here marked B plus. There's our B plus, first one. Okay, let's put the M minus on. Turn it this way so we'll have access to our male spades. And last, B minus. Okay, now before I tighten all these down, one thing we've got to do on this car is if you'll notice, on the old controller, this is the stock one that we just took off. It has five pins. Pin five is not used, only the first four are. This one has got four male spades. We've got to take this wiring harness cut each one of these wires, add about six inches of wire, and change it going, putting butt connectors here, and putting male spade ends here. So, let's get that done and get this cut off. 
Okay, at this time what I've done is I've snipped the end of the old connector off that came up and plugged into the four pins of the older controller and added about six or seven inches of more wire here with some butt connectors. I've butt put them all right here. I've got them tie strapped together. Once we're done, I'm going to go ahead and put some electrical tape around it. Just give it a better seal so humidity and everything will stay away from it. Now, just to make sure that all the inputs were the same, I called all tracks because this is a larger, heavier duty controller and I'm glad I did because the pin connections are different. On this particular one, the pin connections will go red to pin one. It will next will go white to pin two. Pin three will be black. Pin four originally was orange. Well, the hardware store didn't have any orange, or as my wife would call it, coral. But since she's not here, we're calling it orange. So I hook it up to a yellow wire, and I'm gonna run this yellow wire to pin four. Now, we've got all this hooked up. Every bit of this is good to go. Now I'm gonna come back, tighten three, three terminals. Okay, so far what I did is I went back, got the electrical tape, and everywhere that I put a buck connector, I wrapped it up, that way it'll get a little bit better seal and air and humidity won't get to it as quick. Now, for this power supply to the controller, all tracks requires us to put a little fuse link in between the battery and the main cable. So what I'm fixing to do is I'm going to unplug this cable into here and install a fuse link. Now I did have to go by the hardware store, get a nut, bolt, flat washer, and a lock washer to bolt this to this fuse link. Now I'm using a larger bolt because in another series we'll be hooking up the charger receptacle to this. I wanted to make sure we have plenty of room. Okay, this concludes this portion of hooking up the heavy duty solenoid, the heavy duty controller. Next, what we're gonna do is get the body on this 2003 TXT and get Pawpaw's tree climber ready. Be sure to continue watching all our videos on how to build up your own personal tree climber and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.